All right, just as I predicted, Kel Brook knocks out Amir Khan in six rounds. Uh, let's talk about it. So, um, first round, um, uh, not really much in it. Brook just, you know, working his jab and, you know, whatnot. You know, Amir Khan just moving around, you know, throwing his flurries, but they're not really landing or anything like that. And Brook's just working his jab, not much in the round. And then, later in the first round, Brook hits Khan with a right hand. Khan does the wibbly wobbly dance which he's done so many times in his career and that's number one uh round round one number brook uh round number two um was a bit of a toss up between the two um and Khan was land starting to land with the flurries that he was throwing but K uh Kelbrook occasionally you know landing with the odd good punch here and there but I gave that round to Amir Khan just because of punch output really and he was landing more punches but Kelbrook did have the, you know, better quality punches, I would say. I don't know. But it was it was a mm, it was a close round, but I gave it to Amir Khan. And round three, you know, Amir Khan still doing the same thing again, but he's not really able to land that much. Uh Brook is loading up in his punches uh, a little bit, but um he's able to still, you know, get the right hand off and hit Khan on numerous occasions. And it's kinda of the same thing for round four. And I think round four, no, to round four and then round five. Round five, he hit a mid with a right hand and the mid was hurt. And then Calbrook puts the beating on him and the bell goes. And then round six, basically more the same thing. And Calbrook, you know, puts combinations together. Khan's taking a, too much of a beating. He's not defending himself. And the ref stops the fight. Some people are saying it's an early stoppage. I feel like some of those people that are saying it's an early stoppage are the ones that pick Khan in the first fucking place. But... It wasn't an early stoppage because Khan was just taking a beating for a whole round before then. And then he came into the new round again and still t- still taking the fucking beating and not defending himself. And this has been a recurring theme in Amir Khan. You know, I'm not even someone yet that knows <clears throat> Amir Khan has knows some other people may have, you know, ones that, people that have been watching boxing longer than I have. I've only been watching boxing for four years, right? But I've watched a couple of fights here and there of Amir Khan. And I watched Amir Khan versus Maidana for the first time yesterday, by the way. And from the f- for the few fights I watched of Amir Khan, I watched his fight with um Danny Garcia. I watched his fight with, uh, what's the guy's name? Brutus Prescott. He lost that fight, obviously. Um, I watched Amir Khan against Daniel Garcia. I watched him against uh, Sammy Vargas. watched him against Billy Dibb. I watched him against Terence Crawford. Um, those are the fights I can name at the top of my head right now. The ones that I've watched. Uh, fights that I watch that have him in it and you know in those fights I know something when he throws his flurries he's always falling in with his shots and when he falls in he wants to lift his chin up at the same time he's bound to get time doing that he got time by Danny Garcia and even when he was winning those rounds against Danny Garcia he was still getting time you know Danny Garcia was still countering more with a body shot you know um he got time by Sammy Vargas later on when they fought as well and he, this time in that fight, he was backing up with his hands down, chin in the air, and that's why he got hurt in the tenth round of their fight. Um, you know, um, he got you know timed against Terence Crawford early on, and he got dropped in that fight. Amir Khan has had you know defensive vulnerabilities, even dating back to the Maidana fight. The same defensive vulnerabilities I'm talking about that he showed here. He throws flurries, and um, you know, flows flurries, falls in, and lifts his chin up in the air. You know, he's he's fo- he's so focused. On you know just showing his hand speed that he's not really thinking about what he's throwing, and I've noticed that when I've watched his fights, you know that he doesn't really think about the shots he throws. He just throws for the sake of throwing. He throws because he just wants to showcase his hand speed, which is good and all. But with someone that can time you, like Kelbrook can, like Danny Garcia can, like Terence Crawford can, like can that's a fight I always forgot to mention. I watched Canelo fight obviously, like Canelo can, you know, you know then. What's that? And all those fights are named. He lost. You know? So, it was mistakes like that constantly, especially with him dropping his his lead hand here and there as well. You're bound to get countered. And it's happened time and time again with Amir Khan. You know? So, his flaws were always there. And I said that in my prediction video that we would have Amir Khan historically is shown to be a fast starter. I don't think he's going to start as well, as fast as he normally does. Because of the ring rust he's had. We know he started fast against Maidana. Almost knocked him out in the first round of their fight. You know. And the Maidana fight as well. He got caught in that fight. You know. 
same flaws, you know, got hurt badly in the 10th round, almost got stopped, you know, always on the verge of being stopped, I should say, you know, I don't want to try and over-exaggerate, but he was badly hurt in the 10th round of that fight, um, yeah, um, he flew Peterson in the first round, um, he, uh, Floyd Sammy Vargas earlier on in their fight. He uh fucking you know, he was having a good start against Sammy Garcia earlier on in the fight. Uh took out Dimitri Salia early. You know, Amir Khan historically, you know, has started well early, you know. Um so yeah, he started well early historically, but even with that, I don't think he was gonna start well early because of the ring rust, you know. Um he hasn't fought since uh July twenty nineteen. Brooks last fight, well, before this one was uh November twenty twenty against Terence Crawford. You know, he lost that fight, but he's been more active, you know. And it may come with having that long of a layoff at his age as well. You know, I always felt even though Brooke relies more on timing and he doesn't start as quick as Khan, he can still can still um start a bit quick. And the fact that it may come will have to be coming to kill Brooke and he's having such a long layoff and he's at this age and it may come be uh, sorry, Kell Brook has been more active. You know, I thought that Kelbrook still would have a, you know, have the upper hand in the beginning of the fight. And that's what happened. Um, you, some may even have the argument that Kelbrook won every single round of the fight. You know, and may Khan never really got into it like that. But the second round, okay, cool. But other than that, he couldn't really get into it. You know, ring rust a factor? Probably was. But at the same time, he just feels like Kelbrook was too good for him. Because some of his many defensive vulnerabilities that may Khan has... You know, defensive vulnerabilities I talked about before. He also has um a tendency to, you know, just tuck up and let his opponent hit him. Um, let his opponent hit him and not even try to count on the inside. And the reason why he doesn't try and count on the inside is because his inside work is non existent, really. You know, Amir Khan has a habit of just, you know, tucking up and ha- becomes a punch back to his opponent several times over and over. Sammy Vargas fight, the Maidana fight, all these fights that he's had, you know, he has a habit of doing that. And opponents will take advantage of that. It's just basically like a punch bag, pretty much. Let's his opponent sit on him. And then, you know, opponents can take advantage of that. So these flaws that he said has always been there. You know, defensive flaws, the, chip, uh, the punch resistance, and the flaws and all that. The amount of times he's been down, the amount of times he's been, been hurt. The times he's been knocked out. Badly as well. You know, I always felt like Brooke with timing coming in because he has a history of being timed. Brooke's got punching power, you know. And a man can will be have you know have to come forward, you know, and a man can hasn't got the greatest head movement, defense, and whatnot. So I always felt like uh, uh, Kelbrook was gonna win this fight. The only thing that made it intriguing was, you know, Kel Kel's Brooks eye socket, because of how quickly you know Terence Crawford was able to take him out. You know, uh, the only really cl- clean punch that Terence Crawford landed on um, Terence Crawford landed on Kel Brook. You know, Brook was all over the place. Um, but and but the thing about that is that obviously we all know that Khan doesn't punch as hard as Crawford. But what I was taking into account was Khan's hand speed. You know, and Brook in some fights can get tagged and have no care for defense, like the Michael Rafa fight. You know, so if he's getting tagged by someone like Michael Rafa, who hasn't got as fast hands as Khan, then Khan would definitely you know be able to tag him at some point. You know, that's the only thing that made it intriguing. Was the fact that uh, Terence Crawford was able to walk through uh, Kelbrook the way he did, you know? But I just felt like I made kind of way too many flaws against Kelbrook, you know? He had way, way too many flaws. He has too many flaws. I'm someone who was as range as Kelbrook, got the power that Kelbrook has and the time that Kelbrook has and the history that Amir Khan has of being timed and with all his defensive vulnerabilities. I felt like it was going to only go one way. It would have been cool to see Amir Khan pull it off, but, you know. I always felt like eventually Amir Khan was going to get time. But it was an intriguing fight. Um, it was a good fight. I could see why some people may pick Khan. But at the same time, I couldn't just go and pick Khan because, like I said, all the vulnerabilities he has, you can't just ignore that. And especially someone like Brookie can still, you know, can still punch. And he was even tagging Terence Crawford in that fight as well. He made his eyes swell up. And Amir Khan is not as good defensively as Terence Crawford as well. So, yeah. But... It was a good fight while it lasted. I was definitely, you know, I was definitely up. You know, the moments, yeah, like, say, like, you're playing a video game and, you know, you're just casually sitting there and then when shit starts getting interested, that's when you start to raise up on your seat. That was basically me with this fight. You know, I couldn't lay back. I had to, I had to stay up on my seat. But, yeah, um, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was, a, it was an amazing fight while they lasted. Highly anticipated fight. The crowd were definitely into it and such. And, you know, it's good to see that those two were able to um, embrace each other after the fight, especially after the shit they were saying. You know, I never would have thought that um, these guys would have been able to embrace each other because they may have kind of said a lot of crazy things about Kelbrook, you know. So, um, resume can't go from here. I don't really see anywhere we can go from here now. I mean, like, Breeders Prescott fight, okay, cool. That was early on in his career and such. Some people may even thought he may not have ever come back from that, but he did. And he lost to Lamont Peterson. I haven't seen that fight, to be fair. From what I've heard about it, a lot of people felt like Khan won that fight. And we were supposed to rematch in, what, May 2012, and Lamont Peterson tested positive for um, testosterone. You know, them drugs that enhance his testosterone levels. So, you know, some people are like, okay, cool, you know. Uh, it's not really an L. And then we got knocked out by Danny Garcia badly and such. But, you know, to be fair at the time, some people may have thought Danny was on proven and such. I don't know. This is 2012, Danny Garcia, pretty much. So some people may have thought may not have come back from that. But since then, he's put, put up a good amount of wins and such. Then he got knocked out by Canelo, you know. And a lot of people thought he would never come back from that. And some people say that he's not hasn't been the same since. And he most likely hasn't. And then he lost to Ter- he came back, won two fights, lost to Terence Crawford. And, you know, some pe- a lot of people are like, okay, at this point, he's washed. And then he fought Billy Dib, won that fight. And now it's knocked out by Kelbrook. What I can say about these fights, though, is that, okay, the Breeders Prescott won. Okay, cool. Right? But at least with the others, say with the likes of Terence Crawford, or Terence Crawford, Canelo Alvarez, and, you know, um, Danny Garcia. But I will mention Peterson, but I'm not going to mention because, yeah. One, haven't seen that fight, and two, you know, there's a lot of questions about it. Um, Canelo, pound for pound level fire. Terence Crawford, pound for pound level fire. Danny Garcia at the time, even though he was an underdog, um, underdog going into that fight, I think the reason why you know, it doesn't look as bad as on his record, it's because Danny Garcia's went on to, you know, do better things since then, you know, so maybe at the time when he got knocked out by Danny, it was, you know, seen as a bad thing because it was a brutal knockout and I think Danny was probably maybe seen as unproven at the time, I don't know, um, but yeah, but with this defeat, he was at the tail end of his career <clears throat> and he lost to a washed up Kel Brook. So, you know, it's going to look a lot different on his career. You know, with Danny Garcia, okay, cool, there was a potential that he could be better. You know, Terence Crawford, we all know how good he is. Ken Alvarez, we already know how good he is. Breeders Prescott, okay, cool. Bad knockout defeat, especially that early on in your career. But he bounced back from that. But here, he's, I, I, I don't think he's going to, he's not going to bounce back from this because his age, the, the mileage of the knockout defeats, and he lost to a, a washed up Kel Brook who he avoided for years anyways. So what other fights are there for him, really and truly, you know? You, I mean, Khan will always be a big name, but his stock has, you know, gone down, you know? What 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 top world weights, what names is he going to get after this? What top, what, like, what top names is he going to get after this? I have no idea. Like, there's nowhere else for him to go, really, to be honest with you. That's the way I see it. But with Kel Brook, he could... He could, he could, he could do something with this. I'm not expecting him to do much more after this if he even fights again, but he could do something with this. At least he can come out and say, "I beat Amir Khan." The stock has risen. You know, he's the guy that beat Amir Khan. Amir Khan's a big name down here, um, down here in the UK. So he can do something with it. I won't say for long, but he can do something with it. Who do you fight? I don't know. Some people may say Conor Ben. I'm, yeah, he could fight Conor Ben. Um, other than that, I don't really know. See, even then, there's not much options out there for Kel Brook. But he can do something after this. With a man can't, he's got nowhere to go, really. He really hasn't. So, yeah. Um, Kelbrook wins by a uh, sit front knockout, like I predict- predicted. Right hands that kept on hurting a man can't. Actually, before I go, the funny thing about this fight, though, is even after all the uh, defensive vulnerabilities that a man can't have shown and uh, the punch resistant issues, the funny thing about this fight is that he never went down. He never went down. <laughs> All of his knockout defeats, the man has went down, except for this one. 
So that, that's interesting. This isn't only the feat where he hadn't touched the canvas. I believe he didn't touch the canvas against Lamont Peterson. You know, that fight went to a decision. But all his other knockout defeats, such as um, British Prescott, Danny Garcia, um, Terence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, he had touched the canvas. So, yeah, this, no, no, that was just interesting. <laughs> that was just interesting at this point. And, yeah, big respects to both fighters, including Amir Khan. Um, even though he spent all these years avoiding Brooke, and now we see why, you know, you can never say that this man, you know, is a coward. You know, he's been in there with guys like Crawford, uh, Amir Khan, uh, Jesus Christ, Crawford, Canelo Alvarez, Danny Garcia, um, you know, um, Pauli Malinagi, uh, fucking, who else? Marcus Madonna, uh, Devon Alexander. You know, he's been in there, he's been in there with, you know, some top guys, you know. So you can never, you know, question this guy's career. And he's, he's had a good career and he's done a lot for British boxing, you know, especially won a, a, a silver medal <clears throat> in the 04 Olympics, um, you know, at the time where British boxing wasn't really what it is today. That's what I can say. It wasn't what it was is in what he is today and that him winning the silver medal um really you know helps british boxing boxing a lot and you know the government increased the funding for the sport over in the uk you know and then after that james de gale who's gold medal on the way olympics and Andy josh on the 2012 olympics despite some, what some people may say about the fights uh i agree he lost to seven but you know the way it looks british fight winner a gold medal you know, it's going to enhance the sport anyways. But I'm going off on a tangent. Um, yeah, Kelbrook beats Amir Khan. Let's see. We'll see if he fights next, if he fights at all. Uh, again, maybe he retires after this. I think Amir Khan should retire. Um, but uh, I don't know if he's got any expenses or anything like that. Or I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's best for him to retire because taking several knockout defeats that he has and taking all the punishment he has, it's not going to be good for him you know, as he gets to advanced age. So, yeah. Anyways, Slafez, I'm out. Catch you guys later.